I got a friend in Amsterdam, the birthplace of Blender, and he's got this really cool desk lamp and uh, he's modeling it. And I decided that uh, I'll give it a shot as well. Um, and so tonight I'm going to work on the base here and maybe these arms in this piece that uh, joins those arms together. Okay, so over here in Blender 2.79, I'm gonna select everything and hit X and delete. I'm gonna switch over to Cycles Render and uh, we're going to get started. Uh, my screencast keys are on, of course. And I'm gonna hit Shift A and I'm gonna bring in a uh, UV sphere. And from front view, I'll hit one and then five to go into orthographic so I can look straight on to it. I'm going to go into edit mode and then wireframe. And I am going to, it doesn't matter whether I'm in vertex or face or edge selection. I'm gonna hit B to border select and I'm going to grab all of that and hit X and delete those, those vertices. So I've got, uh, I've got just half of it, all right? So I'll go back into solid view and I think I'll go into edge selection. It's just a little bit easier. I'm gonna shift alt and click that edge there and I'm going to start uh, doing the base. Um, so it looks like it comes out and then it looks like it goes down a little bit, not straight out. All right, so let's just go ahead and just do this by eye. I'm gonna hit E to extrude and then I'm gonna hit S and I'm just gonna pull out a ways. And then with that still selected, I'm gonna use the Z arrow here and I'm gonna pull down a little bit like that. All right, let's go back to the picture here. And then it looks like it comes straight down and it goes in. So let's do that. So with that edge still selected, I'm gonna hit E to extrude and I'm gonna pull downwards. A nice distance, whatever looks good. And then we're gonna go in. So I'm gonna hit E to extrude and I'm gonna hit S to scale. And I'll hit Shift Z just to make sure it doesn't go up at all. Yeah, we'll come in that much. That looks fine. And I'm gonna hit E to extrude again. I'm gonna come down a little bit. Hit one just so I can see how far I'm coming down. Something like that. And now let's have a look and see if it comes right out to this. Well, it looks like it comes right out to the same level. So I can look from the bottom if I want. 7 is the top. Control 7 is the bottom. I'm going to hit E to extrude and S shift Z. I'm going to pull it out till my line looks like it matches up. It doesn't have to be perfect. I could make it snap to be perfect, but I won't worry about that. So then I'm going to hit E to extrude again and I'm going to pull down a ways. I think that's the end of it. Let's just have, a, have another look. So these pieces here look pretty much equal. That height and that height. So I can just do it by eye and say, okay, that's that's good enough. And uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna close off the bottom. And so the way I'm, I want to do that is hit E to extrude, S to scale uh, in like that, and then E to extrude, and I'm gonna go Alt M, merge at center. So let's uh, go out back into object mode and see what we have. So we have this. All right, it can still be edited if we want to. Now, what I'll do is I'm gonna put on a subdivision surface of two and hit smoothing and we'll get this effect. Now let's get rid of the grid floor, hit N and under display, we'll uncheck the grid floor. And to close that, uh, I'm gonna put in some edge loops to make these you know, edges a little bit sharper. So uh, this area here, and this area, I'm gonna go Control R and I click and I'm gonna pull up to near the top, but not quite at it. Control R and I'm gonna do the same down there. Now, if you want, I'm gonna do it down here. If you want those, those edges to be equal, you know, uh, up here and down there, I'm gonna go Control R and I can roll my mouse up till I get two and then scale in the Z and pull and they will go up and down equally. Let's just have a look and see what that does to our model. See, it sharpens that up nicely. I still think we should go in here and sharpen that up a bit. So I'll go into edit mode. And in here, I will click and drag up and click and drag down. And notice I'm not going right to the very bottom. I'm just going to about there. So it's a little bit rounded still. Looks a little nicer that way and it catches a bit more light. 
So that's pretty good. I just want to decide if I want this that soft. I have a feeling we want it a little bit harder. See, it's a little bit of a harder edge there. So let's come in there and uh, I can put an edge loop right here, Control R, and just squeeze it in till I see that white starting to disappear. Maybe let's try it there. Mm, pretty good. Um, I could put one here as well and bring it down. And that ought to do it, I would imagine. Okay, I'm gonna save this. And uh, I'll just save it right here and I'll call this uh, desk lamp video part one because I'll be doing at least two parts for this. All right, cool. Now, the only thing is, be, you, well, there, you can see it there. I don't know how well you can see it on camera. This sort of pulling or stretching. And I think the way I'm going to fix that is I'm going to select everything in edit mode and I am going to, what am I going to do? Um, I think I'm just going to smooth like that. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit W, subdivide smooth. That's what I'm going to do. That's going to give me more vertices, but I'm not worried. But that's going to pretty much get rid of that, uh, that problem. All right, cool. Now I want to look at this and see maybe some of my edges are a little bit too sharp. There's a little bit too much. Uh, whether or not I needed all these edges in there or not. So I'm going to select um, which edge do I want to select. You can turn off the subdivision surface and you can see what you've got. And uh, I could potentially be okay or I could try X dissolve edges and see if I, if I like the effect any better. I think that looks better. So maybe I've got a little bit too much. You know what, on render it probably wouldn't look bad at all. So I think we'll stick with what we've got so far. Let's hit one and look from the front and my 3D cursor is right here, pretty much in the middle of this object. Um, you can also set origin to geometry and see if it moves it that it didn't. Uh, let's work on the switch, which is basically a rectangle, all right, that uh, I'm going to bring in separately. And you can see that it's pushed in a little bit, so you get a little bit of the curvature of the, of the sphere here. And it's poking up near the top, so we'll just mess around with that. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and shift A, mesh, cube. And we will, uh, maybe I'll look down from the top. So where's my front? If I move it that way, is that the front? Yeah, that's the front. <laughs> All right, let's scale this in the X. And get the, and we'll scale it in the Y. And move it out. We'll just start positioning this. Scale it in the Z, SZ is what I'm doing here. We'll scale in the X again. And once we sort of have the, the top position, let's say it's poking out there, um, I can take this face and I can pull it in till I get the curvature I like. And then in wireframe, I can grab that face from the bottom, come back to solid, it's still selected, and I can pull it out and do this kind of thing till it just starts to go in. And then we'll look at that and see if we like if we like that or if, or is that too much if it is a bit too much i can i can pull it out a bit you know but i want those edges on the inside pretty much now i'm going to be doing some work on this anyhow so let's see i think i need it a little bit longer coming in more towards the middle so we'll do that so i'll go back into edit mode i'll grab that face i'll just pull it pull it in like this and I can I can play with this a little bit and I do want it above and I can pull that face down well maybe I don't want it down that much so maybe I'll just take this and pull it in a bit all right that's pretty good. Let's scale this in the axe a little bit, a little bit narrower, and we'll build uh, we'll build a switch out of this. Um, now, yeah, 
we're going to want this to look relatively smooth and you can do this a couple of ways we can use a bevel maybe put two segments and pull this back until we just see it like that and we can try smoothing and rendered that would look pretty good I might start with that and I think I will start with that actually okay so the other question is whether or not this, oh, and by the way, because this is a separate object, I'm going to set origin to geometry and that will bring my, my gizmo or my transform tool right in the middle of this object. I'm also gonna go shift S cursor to selected so that everything is centered around this object right now. What I was wondering was whether or not this edge actually goes down a little bit like that. It, it looked to me a little bit like it did, but that, that makes it a little bit harder to, to model things. So I don't think I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so let's go back and look at the diagram. So it looks like we have a little recessed area in here. All right, that should be pretty easy to do. So let's go into edit mode and select that face. And we'll use the inset, so hit I and pull in. And hopefully it will come in in the X and the Y directions equally so that these sides are equal and it looks pretty good. So with that done, I'm going to hit E to extrude and I'm going to pull down in the Z down a ways like, like this. Now we may start to hit the surface of the, um, of the sphere when I do that. So we may have to adjust this a bit. This will also affect the bevel a little bit, but it's looking okay. Um, maybe I can just pull it back just a small amount like that and we're still embedded in there so I still think we're okay all right so we're going to build a switch and that may not be deep enough by the way but we'll see now to build a switch we can either bring in a new rec uh, a new um, a new cube and the best way to do that is to select the area that you want to bring the cube in at roughly there and select it and go shift s cursor to select it to bring the 3d cursor right there and then go back into object mode and then if i bring in a cube it'll show up right there but then i gotta scale this thing and etc cetera, etc cetera. i think an easier thing to do is to select a piece i say well, look i want to make like a rectangular or box like switch anyhow and so I could start from this piece so what I'll do is I'll select that piece and I'll hit shift D to make a duplicate of it and then P to break it out separated by selection go back into object mode and now when I select this piece here uh, it doesn't look like I got anything but I've selected that now my 3d transform is down here because it still sort of relates to the cube but now I have this selected so just go origin of geometry and you can even do shift s cursor to select it bring the 3d cursor right to there and everything's focused it has inherited the modifier that came from this because I, I took a piece of this so that's fine it's got a bevel on it uh, we could leave that on for now we may or may not use that so let's go into edit mode and select it and let's give it some thickness let's hit e to extrude and let's pull down a ways now a couple of things are happening first of all there's smoothing on i think let's go into object mode yeah there's smoothing on and that's going to affect things so i'm going to turn it off for the moment but also get this darkness that's because i extruded downwards instead of upwards it just means some of my polys are facing um inside instead of out so a to select it all and just go control n all right control n that will flip the polys all right so this is this is what we have here now you can shut off the bevel by clicking on the eye so that you do, it doesn't distract you. And now I've got this. And what I'm going to do here is in edge selection, I'm going to take this edge and I'm going to pull it up like that. And I'm going to pull this one this way. And I'm going to take this edge and pull it down just a little bit more. And I'm going to pull it this way and go back. And let's put on that bevel again. And that may be too much for this object. So let's do that. Just tone it down a bit. And let's see if we bring this down into, the, into its place. I may have to adjust its position. It looks like it completely fills that space. And that's not necessarily what I want. So I'm going to scale this. Now, if I scale this in object mode, 
I should apply the scale. Um, if I do it in edit mode, it's fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to hit S, X, and scale it in the X. I'm going to hold shift so it moves in slower increments. I just want to see a little bit of the border around it. And then I'm going to go S, Y, and I'm going to hold the shift. Just so that we see that it looks like it's a switch in there, in its spot. Now, is that too much for the switch or is that okay? That's a big, big switch. Okay, maybe it is a little bit too big. So uh, I think I will go into edit mode and I'm going to S, Z, scale it in the Z and just make it a little bit, a little bit less crazy. Okay. Hmm. That's all looking a little bit fat to me. So I'm going to select everything and scale in the X. Now I said something about applying scale and so I should do that. I'll select my switch and I'll go control A, apply scale. And I'll select this because I edited this in object mode as well. I scaled in the X. So I'm going to control, I'm going to apply scale. It doesn't always make a big difference, but we should do it if we can. So this is what we have so far. Hopefully it's looking all right. Um, we'll deal with putting on some, some lettering on that in a bit. The other thing that this um, thing has, and I may decide I want to change that. In fact, I see the upper end is here and it's a little bit curved. Um, so what was, what's going on there? The upper end is on the outside. Oh, I think we got to flip this around. So let's rotate this 180 degrees, RZ 180. And we may have to reposition it a little bit. And maybe I'll bring it down a bit, just like that. There we go, there was an oversight. And do I like the size of that? Do I want it narrower? What do I want? Got that, I got the edge poking up. Mm, not poking up that much though. I'm bringing it up just so I can see a little bit more of that. That still looks fine. I might reduce the bevel a tiny bit. It'll help with the smoothing. I think. I think it's all right for now. Okay, so the next thing is these arms. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a cylinder and I'm going to angle it down and give it some thickness and I'm going to mirror it to the other side. Okay, so one is the front, control one is the back. Let's select uh, the dome, I guess, shift S, cursor selected, and bring in a cylinder. I'm going to leave the default values, but I think I'll put for the cap nothing. So it's open. And go to edit mode and I'm just going to start scaling. Now I've lost it, so I'll bring it up and start working on the overall diameter of this thing. I'll start bringing it back and I'll start bringing it over to one side. And we'll just start looking at the thing. Let's say, what if it was there? Is that the right position for it? Let's shift alt and click this edge and start bringing it up so it comes above here like that i can hit three and look from the side now i gotta think about how tall these things are so they definitely go above the top here um do i have any other i don't really have any other good pictures of this all right so um you know, even the, the uh, angled part goes above, not by too much. So if I put it to about there, we can maybe think about adjusting that. And now what I'll do is I will take this part and I think I'll just try rotating in the X like that. All right, let's look from the side. All right, that bends it a little bit, but that's okay. Something like that. Notice that my transform tool is still down there, so I'm going to set origin to geometry, and I'll even go shift S cursor selected. Okay, let's look from the front. I think that's possibly all right. Is that enough of a dip downwards? 
Yeah, it's not too crazy. All right. Okay, now what should we do here to give it some thickness? Maybe select it all. Okay, I could try it this way. I could hit E to extrude and Alt S, and I am going to push upwards and do that. Now you'll notice some darkening uh, there as well. It means my polys are flipped. So I select it all, Control N, and flip my polys. And how does that look? It's not smoothed or anything. Now, do I have an issue here with that? Hmm, not crazy about it. All right, let's try. Let's, I may come back to that. Let's try solidify. Maybe that will do a better job for us. Well, okay. Maybe I should have bent it later. I think it's, we're doing, doing the same thing. Okay. Um, hmm, what about... Let's try this. Let's high. Let's select this and go Shift H so I can see just just this thing. I'm just thinking. What if I selected both of those edges? E and S. Okay, so I won't do that uh, that way. What if I put on individual origins and S? Okay, that's coming in nicer. And it should be coming in on the bottom. And then what if I control E and bridge edge loops and then select it all and control N just to make sure the polys aren't flipped. Does that give me a nicer result? Okay, let's open at the top, let's open at the bottom. I think that's maybe a better way to do it. Now for this guy, I think um, house just smoothing on it. Not too nice yet, eh? So if we put on subdivision surface of two, and then we come in, and then we start bringing in edge loops. So drag an edge loop up near the top, very close. I'm gonna need another one, just to re call in reinforcements. If I do that kind of thing, that's on the outside. Let's do something on the inside. Click up, uh, control R and bring it up near the top. We'll start seeing it take form. Let's see what that's looking like. We're not there yet. And by the way, we're going to put on smoothing and that's going to help. And we'll do a little bit more to sharpen it up. Okay. This area here. Okay. If I click control R and I drag an edge loop here, it'll sharpen this up, but don't bring it right to the end. And I'll do one on this side. I want a little bit of roundness, but I want it a little bit tight. And that's what I get there now this area has lost its shape because of the subdivision surface a lot of it's not going to be seen so i'll bring down an edge loop there and i may put one just another one in there just just for a bit a bit more reinforcement let's go alt h and bring everything back and see how it looks okay hopefully it's not too sharp for you um if you felt it was too sharp you could look at this and say you know, maybe we don't need this edge loop here. I mean, this is the actual edge of the circle. And this is what we brought up. Let's try this. Let's select that edge. And by the way, I'm in edge selection. I'm just going shift alt and click and it should get the whole thing. You can't just delete it, but just go X, dissolve it. And let's have a look. See, it's now, it's too amorphous. It's, it's not, it's not sharp enough. So I'm gonna stick with that. And that's actually fine in my, in my view. Um, let's see what happens if we mirror this across how they'll be positioned. Let's look at the back, all right? And say, you know, what if I have one uh, just mirrored, all right? The way we can mirror across this is to select, if this is a symmetrical object, which it is, uh, go shift, uh, first of all, origin of geometry on this, shift S, cursor to select it. So my 3D cursor is right in the middle of the geometry of this. Select that and just close that up, the subdivision surface. I'm not applying it. I'm gonna choose mirror and with my eyedropper, I'm gonna choose this, that thing. Now that's where they end up showing up. Now I just wanna look and see uh, how I feel they're positioned. They look to me like they're a little bit more almost towards the center line, but off of the center line. So I may need to move these up. Now if I, because they're mirrored, I look at side view. If I select one, and by the way, is that far enough in? Yeah, like that. I can, if I move one up, it moves the other one. 
All right, maybe I'm gonna go for that. All right, I'm, I'm reasonably happy with that. As I look at this, this switch looks too big to me. The more I look at that, and especially from here, it looks like it comes about, I don't know, a fifth away up or, you know, across the whole thing. <laughs> That's, yeah, this is looking too big to me. So let's, let's try scaling this in the Y and moving it out and seeing if we can get a nice, a nice view where it doesn't look so, so big. Mm. Maybe that's all right. Yeah, maybe that's all right. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go with that for now. All right, it's time to make those arms. Now, we're not gonna make everything uh, on the arms uh, because we're eventually gonna be tilting them over and making the top, uh, so we'll just start, start it. Um, all right, well, let's, um, the way I would like to do this is using a cylinder, but to make things easy for us, instead of bringing a cylinder and trying to position it in the hole, why don't we do this? Why don't we, first of all, go shift H and hide everything else. I've got, if I go into edit mode, this part is angled, I, I admit, and that's not awkward. But the very bottom, let's say this edge, shift alt and click that edge. That's a perfect circle and it's already on the cylinder. If I was to shift D and P and break it apart by selection, and then find it again, if I can. And by the way, I'm, in, I, I, I'm getting it on both sides because I've got the mirror on. If I just turn the mirror off for now, just uncheck the eye. This piece here that I've got selected is the new circle that I broke apart from this. My transform tool is still up here. Set origin of geometry and even shift S cursor selected. Bring this up and it's already almost the perfect diameter for this. Let's use this to build that uh, cylinder that we need. All right, so let's go into edit mode, A, uh, uh, to select it all, and let's scale it a little bit. And we can do more of that if you want, but we'll, we'll, we'll let's, let's give it some, some, uh, some length, first of all. E to extrude, and let's start pulling it up. Now, by the way, this piece has inherited all of the modifiers from this, and I don't necessarily want that right now. So on this, I'm gonna get rid of the subdivision surface and, and or the mirror and get rid of the subdivision surface. Okay, so let's do this. Let's bring it up. Now, it may be slightly discolored. That's because I, I need to go Control N, flip the polys. Okay, now let's pull this back. Okay, it doesn't quite fit. I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm gonna scale, but not in the Z. I don't wanna affect the height right now. I'm gonna go S, Shift Z, and then I can pull it in and make it smaller than the hole. And we could start with that and see how's it looking. So that was easier than bringing in another cylinder and trying to get it to fit. It just copy from what the geometry I've already got. Now it's not smooth or anything, but I'm gonna deal with that in a little bit now. If we look at this, we can see some little lines here. I don't know, I don't know if there's two. There is a ball on the end of it too that helps it pivot. I don't think about whether or not we want to do that. And then it comes up and it sort of telescopes. There's a couple of levels. Looks like there's this one and then it gets smaller and then it gets smaller. And that's all I'm going to do for that till we get up near the top. So let's bring this up a ways. In fact, I'm gonna bring everything else back so I get my sense of scale and that stuff. So let's come back to this guy, go into edit mode, and shift alt and click that upper edge. And we can look from the side, and let's just start bringing it up. Maybe at that point we'll, we'll start going in. All right, we'll make one of those telescoping, uh, telescoping, telescoping regions, whatever. All right, so let's zoom into that. And the way we're gonna, here, you hit the period key. I'm gonna hit E to extrude and S to scale and to pull in like that much maybe. And then I hit E to extrude and I'm gonna come up a ways. And we've got our first level and we'll come up a little bit. 
like maybe there, and then we'll go E to extrude S. We're just doing this by eye, all right? We're not doing it by measurements, which you could also do. All right, we'll, we scaled it in a little bit, and then I'm gonna hit E to extrude, and I'm gonna pull it up a little bit more, and that would continue up to the top, like that. Okay, so let's have a look at that. It's not smooth yet, and there's more we need to do. Now, if you didn't like the position of those, and you thought, oh, it's too far up near the top, I need it down here. I mean, you could select it all, go into edit mode, and in wireframe, box select the area that you need, all of that, you know, um, let's go back to the side view, or, so I'll stay there, uh, in one of these other modes like vertex and make sure you get all the vertices there and then you could slide it down and you could put it wherever you want. Okay, we're not gonna worry about that too much though. We still have to put that connecting piece somewhere in there, so that's fine. So let's, um, well, let's keep working on that area then. I'm gonna go to edge selection. These edges are too sharp and they won't cast very much light and they will look awkward. If I select this edge, shift, alt, and click it, and this one, the sharp edges, if I bevel those, then it will look a lot better. So I'm, I've selected those edges. I'm gonna go Control B, and you can see a, a cross and a dotted line. I'm gonna pull away from that area, and you start to get this blue region. At least it's blue in my blender. Uh, do it to about there or something. Not, don't go crazy like that. Just like that much, and roll your mouse up. One, two, to get two. And, Push your mouse in if you want to change the how much of that blue space you've got and then click to accept. Let's deselect and see what that's done. Now it's not smoothed yet, but well, we can put on smoothing, but we'll have some other issues with smoothing we have to fix. So we might as well deal with those uh, right now. What you do when you smooth something like a cylinder and you get that ghost-like effect is you're gonna need some edge loops. So I'm gonna put an edge loop, Control R, I'm gonna pull an edge loop down there. See the way it's darkening up? I'm gonna pull one down there, not right to the bottom, and I'm gonna pull one up to there. Let's see if that's done anything we like. This area looks nice. This area is getting there. This area is still kind of messed up. But remember, we're not gonna worry about the top, but I will put an edge loop here. All right, so I'm gonna click, put an edge loop, it'll put it in the middle, bring it down to near the bottom and you can zoom in and you can bring it a little further down to about, you know, maybe around there and let's see what that's done. There, see? And notice the rounding catches light so you'll be able to see it better. Okay, now did I forget to bring in an edge loop up to there? Well, it looks okay. Uh, we'll need another more edge loops. In fact, I'm gonna need one down near the bottom so let's, uh, to help with that smoothing, but actually I may not when I do the next thing I'm about to do. So hopefully that's not too long. No, I don't think it's too long. Not too long at all considering the size of that base. So let's do those um, little cuts that you see here. Okay, and those are very easy to do. Just uh, go into edit mode and uh, I'm gonna bring in an edge loop, control R, and you might not see it, it's off screen, but it's up there. I'm gonna bring one to about maybe where? There, I can still move that. Yeah, it's, I don't know if I'm gonna do that ball at the bottom. Yeah, maybe around there. And I'll bring in another edge loop and I'll bring it to about there. Okay, just do it by eye, wherever you want. Select both of them and go Control B and pull, like you're beveling, just to make a blue area, like about that wide. And then we're going to extrude it in, both of those pieces at the same time, we're gonna extrude them in. By the way, I noticed that I am in individual origins. I had switched to that. I'm just gonna switch back to median point, which is the default. It, it hasn't affected anything so far. E to extrude. And then I want to scale, but I want to scale equally inside. So can I just scale shift Z? I believe I can. And that will scale them in, but not up or down. And that's fine. And that's what I wanted, but I'm not quite done. Because look at the effect, just get this ghost kind of 
uh, you know, hard to see. So what we're going to do is first we're going to bevel all of the sharp edges. Not that one. Okay, all of these outer edges, that's a sharp edge. I'm not going to worry about this one inside. You, we could, but I'm not going to. This one, this one, this one, and this one. They're all pretty sharp. Watch what happens when I bevel. I'm going to go control B, gently pull back to make a blue region. So I get, I get the sort of angle and then roll my mouse up twice, let's say, to start make, to round it off a little bit. Tw two is probably good enough. Let's go out. Okay, we see a little bit better, but it's still a little bit white in there. We can fix this up with some edge loops and it'll look great. So let's start on this middle piece. Uh, actually, we're gonna need edge loops at a bunch of, bunch of places, but inside, control R, slide one up near the top, down. Yeah, you can do two at the same time and move them equally if you want, but I'm not too worried. It doesn't really matter. Let's see if that has fixed up the inside. That's looking nice. I still think these areas need edge loops as well. And so what I'll do is I'll put one here. See the color changing a little bit? And here, I'm gonna put one here. I'm gonna pull it up near the top. The white is disappearing. And I'm gonna put one here and it's off screen. I'm gonna pull down, keep pulling, keep pulling. Where'd it go? Did I get one? Oh, it's way up there, so I'll pull it down. And I'll zoom in and I'll pull it down. Now, have a look at that. See if we've done what we need to do. Okay. There you go. So, you know, it. you decide how much, how big you want these spaces to be. I just did it by eye and, you know, hopefully it looks a little bit like that. We got two of them. Now, what about that circle? We want to do that circle. Well, in order to do that circle, I would I would either have to lift this up, and I can lift this up now and shorten it. All right. Now, there's nothing going on at the end of that. We could try this. The, probably the best way to do this is to select this edge and go Shift-S, cursor selected, so that the 3D cursor is right in the middle of the hole there. So if we bring in, say, another UV sphere, which is huge, and edit and scale and leave it in that orientation. Uh, I don't know how big it's supposed to be. I don't know. Let's make it that big. I'll bring it down so it's not right in the hole, but let's say it was like that. Um, now, this is barely visible, so let's just try just with smoothing for the moment. Let's see if we can get that to fit. Select that and that, shift and select both, and see what happens if we pull it down. And that's there. Mm. All right, let's have a look. I think this... The circle needs to be bigger, so I'm just going to work on the circle first of all. Kind of like that, and then this thing, well, you know, we could leave it like that and we could decide later on. Yeah, maybe that is a little bit big. I'm just scaling it in object mode. I'm not going to do anything with that. We can decide later on if we want to keep that or not. Okay. What we'll do though now is I'm going to um, mirror this across. There was more work to do and we'll do that on another time. Control one to look at the back. Uh, I'm going to mirror this across and then we're going to make this piece here. All right. And we're not going to bend them or angle them uh, today. Not until we're ready to do that. Uh, I'm going to mirror them across. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to select, I think these, can I set origin of geometry in the middle? No, because I haven't applied the mirror, so I'll just do it with respect to this. Select this, make sure origin of geometry is set, and shift S, cursor is selected. And just as we mirrored one of these to the other side, uh, with this 3D cursor on this, I'm gonna select this, and I'm gonna add mirror, and with the eyedropper, I'm gonna select that, and we get one on the other side as well. Now, what about the ball? All right, I guess I should do the ball. Add mirror with respect to that and it should get one on the other side now i didn't subdivide that at all because it's not overly visible so we'll just leave it uh, like that okay so we're coming along here um yeah okay hoping i'm gonna like this 
Okay, so let's see what we're going to do next. There's different ways of doing the next part. There's different ways of doing it. I have half a mind. Well, it just depends if you want to build it in or not. What I think I would like to do, okay, here's what, here's what I want to do. Okay, and I'll go look from the back. I want a connecting piece that goes from here to here. All right, like you see in this diagram, this thing. Okay, it's essentially a cylinder that wraps around the cylinder here and a cylinder here and a piece that connects those, those two together. Um, I don't want to mess around with bringing in a cylinder and trying to get it to fit. And so I'm going to use the same trick that I, I like to use. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select an edge, like that edge. Shift D to duplicate it, P to make a copy of it, break it out, and so I can get select just that piece right there. Set origin to geometry right away so that I can move it and I can see it. Now it's tight right around. Let's hit the period key to zoom in on that. And by the way, it's mirroring on the other side, which might just be fine. We could leave it like that. I'm going to go into edit mode and select it, and I'm going to hit S to scale, make it a bit wider, actually quite a bit wider. I'm now going to hit E to extrude and I'm going to pull it down. And then I just got to decide how long I want this thing to be. How big. Now that doesn't have to be the, its final position, by the way. I can still select the whole thing. I can move it down here, which might be where I want it. Okay. Now, it doesn't have any thickness yet. And so what I think I will do is let's try just... Let's try E, Alt S, and push up, but just not touch yet. And you can look on the other side, that happened very quickly, but that is probably all I would need, all right, for the thickness. So I'm going to I'll go Control N because some of my polys are flipped, and let's just have a look at this. Okay, I managed to get the two cylinders there, and I didn't have to position anything, I copied from what I had. All right, now what I want to do is I want to go into edit mode, and I want to look from the side in wireframe. Uh, I don't know. This might be a little tricky to do. All right. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll turn off the mirror for now for that and turn off the mirror for that so I can get right on the side, which is the side I want. Control 3 is the, uh, is the other side. Yeah. And I want to select. I want to go into edit mode in face selection and I want to select the middle piece or pieces like that face and that face I think that looks pretty central I'll have like one two three four to the end one two three four to the end yeah these two and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit E to extrude and I'm gonna start coming out in the X direction like that uh, because I'm mirroring here, I'll, I'll show you. Let's uh, come out of object mode and let's just go Alt H. Do I have stuff hidden or what? Oh, I just have mirrors turned off. You see, if I turn the mirror back on for this piece, you can see it started to come out on this side as well. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to turn on clipping and I'm going to go back into uh, edit mode and I'm going to delete these faces. And then I'm going to grab these edges, Shift H, Shift Alt, and grab those edges. But they're a little curved. That doesn't really matter, but I could straighten them out on the X axis. Okay, so there, let's look at uh, from the front there. Well, I don't know if that's going to help you. Yeah, along the X. All right. I'm going to go SX0. That just flattens them on both sides. And I'm going to bring them across until they hit. Done. And I've got that. Let's go back to this and turn the mirror back on. And I've made that piece. I can still move this. Ah, oh, but the 3D cursor is right. Or the transform tool is there. Well, let's just go origin and geometry. All right. Now, it's going to one side. It's not going right in the middle because I've got a mirror on. It's the center geometry of that piece, which is then mirrored. If I apply that mirror, which I think I will do right now. 
And then if I go set origin to geometry, it'll go right in the middle. And I'm also going to go shift cursor selected just because now we got, I have to deal with this and what we're going to do with it in terms of smoothing it. Um, that won't quite do it. Um, I, I think I'm going to need a subdivision surface, but I can do control R and I can adjust the smoothing a bit and like this. Let's have a look at that. Is that good enough? You know what? I think that is okay. No need for a subdivision surface. Um, it might be useful to put another edge loop here and another one here just to help with this, that smoothing. And I think that's probably just fine. And this piece can still be moved, okay, where we want it. All right, so with that done, I can revisit my switch and once again scale it in the X because it is sometimes, you know, you have to get other pieces in before you start seeing the, at least for me anyhow, start seeing the, the uh, dimensions of things in relation to other stuff. Um, now, I don't have to do anything with the um, labeling, I don't think, in this video. But just to show you what I would eventually be doing is I could be taking these things and uh, rotating them. Um, the way I would tend to do that, though, is let me go into edit mode and let me select, uh, if I can, the very bottom edge, if I can get to it. Uh, let's go into wireframe, and uh, there we go, and come back out. Okay, so I've got that. I would go Shift S, cursor selected, and I would switch my pivot to 3D cursor. All right, so I've got my 3D cursor there, and then if I uh, select all this stuff, and I go Rotate X, I can bend these over, and let's just do that for now, and then have a look at how that works with that ball there. And then it starts to dip into the ball. But I think that probably would be okay. You know, you wouldn't really see that. And that's how that would that's how that would work. But I'm not gonna do that right now. <laughs> uh, okay, so cool. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're good to to leave it at that at that point for now. And we'll come back and do some more in a bit. Thanks for watching.